in this lecture we will discuss about sanger sequencing first let's see what dna sequencing is dna sequencing is actually the technique by which the precise order of nucleotide in a dna sequence can be determined now we are going to discuss about sanger sequencing so sanger sequencing was first developed by frederick sanger and colleagues at the University of Cambridge in 1977 and this technique involves in vitro DNA synthesis and it is based on principle and biochemistry of DNA replication. First, we will see what are the basic requirements of in vitro DNA synthesis. First, we should have a DNA template strand and this template strand will provide complementary basis for the synthesis of new strand. Here is 3 prime end of the template and this is 5 prime end of the template strand and next we need DNA polymerase and oligonucleotide primers and the primer is a short oligonucleotide sequence and they are complementary to the sequences at the 3 prime end of the template and it serves as a starting point for DNA synthesis. So we also require oligonucleotide to catalyze the DNA synthesis and then DNA polymerase will incorporate this deoxynucleotide complementary to the DNA strand. Now here we need to know a very important point that primer is essential for DNA synthesis. But why? Because DNA polymerase cannot catalyze the reaction on itself and it requires a 3' prime hydroxyl group to form a phosphodiester bond with the incoming nucleotide and this initial 3' prime hydroxyl group is provided by the primer. Once DNA synthesis is initiated, each deoxynucleotide is incorporated the growing DNA chain has a 3' prime hydroxyl group of the deoxyribose molecule and thus DNA polymerase keep on elongating the chain. Sanger DNA sequencing technique make use of the modified deoxynucleotide known as D-deoxynucleotide. So let's see what are these D deoxynucleotide and what are their function in DNA sequencing. If you look here, it is a chemical structure of the oxynucleotide. Here you can see a 3' prime hydroxyl group is present on the sugar and this 3' prime OH group participate in phosphodiester bond formation during DNA synthesis. And now if you look here, it is dideoxynucleotide and in its 3' prime position the 3' prime hydroxyl group is absent instead there is a hydrogen present so this is a d deoxynucleotide if in a dna synthesis reaction d deoxynucleotide is added the dna synthesis will terminate with the incorporation of these d deoxynucleotide it is because of the reason that there is no 3' prime hydroxyl group is present for further extension of DNA chain. So, for this reason, the Sanger sequencing, also known as chain termination method or D deoxy DNA sequencing, the, the process of chain termination is started with sample preparation and DNA extraction. DNA extraction can be achieved using proteinase K method or phenol chloroform DNA extraction method. In next step, PCR amplification is performed by designing four different reactions. Here you can see each tube contains the same amount of PCR region that is primer, template, DNA polymerase and DNTPs but it has extra DDNTPs as shown here so the flanking region of the primer bind to the region nearer to our 
for sickness of interest for the sickness what are going to read so in the next step the tag dna polymerase add the dntps to the dna strand but interesting thing is once dna polymerase add any of these four dntps the chain expansion is stopped or terminated the termination process is complete in these four tubes for different DDNTP next amplified PCR chromos are then loaded on the polyacrylamide jelly reflexes and the DNA fragment migrate into the gel based on the size of the fragment the smallest fragment run faster toward the positive charge than the larger fragment so before we run the page the amplified dna fragment are further denatured by heat and the results are interpreted on page manually but now the scenario has changed the process is fully or partially automated a detector detect the fluorescent signal each time when the chain is terminated further the signals are recorded and analyzed computationally and the computational software generate various fluorescence peak depending upon the amount of fluorescence emitted and here is the hypothetical illustration of single sequencing result now i will teach you how to interpret the result of sequencing all four reactions are subject to polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis and the content of each reaction are loaded in separate plan of electrophoresis gel and the page will separate the partial dna fragment reaction depending upon the basis of their size here the swallowed fragment migrate to maximum distance in the gel compared to larger fragment so the largest fragment migrate to the minimum in the gel now let's understand the interpretation of dna sequencing as we know that bands are arranged according to their size here smallest fragment is found at the bottom of autoradiograph whereas the largest fragment found at the top we will read the sequence from bottom to the top thus the sequence we will read here from bottom to top that is g a c t g a a g c t and the direction is from 5 prime to 3 prime direction from bottom to the top now the sequence we read is the sequence of a newly synthesized dna strand now the sequence we read is the sequence of the newly synthesized strand so what will be the sequence of template strand it will be complementary to the sequence we read from autoradiograph so this is from 5 prime to 3 prime direction and the sequence is a g c t t c a g t c and this is the successfully obtain sequence of dna strand so in this manner we can easily find out the sequence of template strand so it's all about single sequencing method